Welcome, everyone. You are in the right place to see uh, Archibus Healthcare Compliance. Our presenters today are going to be Robert Foyer from Imaginet <clears throat> and Nick Stephanidakis from Archibus. Rob, the floor is yours. Rob. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, good, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. This is Rob Foray from Imagine It. Today, uh, Nick Stephanidakis from Archibus will be showing their solution for healthcare compliance. Uh, they've they've uh, done some really good work with within the healthcare industry uh, recently, and uh, we think this is a really good uh, product for those who are interested in compliance in healthcare. So, Nick, I will pass it on to you. Okay, great. Thanks, Rob. So as uh, <clears throat> As Rob and Jenna said, uh, my name is Nick Stephanodakis, and I am with uh, Archibus. And uh, as you said, we'll be talking about um, healthcare compliance with Archibus. Let me see, this is the next slide. Okay, uh, by way of agenda, what we'll um, look at is some of the Archibus solutions or tools for reducing risk, overall risk, uh, in, in particular in healthcare organizations. Um, and that, that starts with understanding the asset-related risks or risks uh, in general and how they, how they affect your overall mission. Um, risk management methods, so we'll look at different methods for how to manage risk, how to classify risk, how to um, take corrective action and plan for uh, improvements and in, in ways of avoiding risk going forward. Um, and in particular, we'll look at Archibus for Healthcare in terms of solutions. Um, Archibus has a compliance management suite that um, does a lot of um, activity around defining different types of regulations, different types of criteria and programs, and then helps you to manage your overall compliance to those regulations through a number of different tools. In addition to compliance management, there are a number of other applications that maybe don't go under the title of compliance management, but contribute significantly to the overall management of risk and compliance throughout uh, healthcare organizations. Uh, part of that framework includes concepts around reducing, avoiding, and transferring of risk, uh, <clears throat> how we set up, manage regulations, requirements, um, and the underlying events that we might take to uh, ensure that we are compliant or that we are doing everything that we need to to make sure that we're to the extent possible avoiding or reducing our exposure to risk and talk about surveys and questionnaires um, as part of the overall process for how we um, do field validations and make sure that um, we are adhering to those programs collecting the necessary information that we need um, and have that information available when it's time to um, work with uh, the various regulation bodies that we might uh, be working with, such as the Joint Commission, CMS, et cetera. Uh, in addition to that, it's not listed here, but we'll also take a look at uh, one, of our, um, one of our good use cases or case studies around using Archibus for compliance management. Okay, um, risks, they're everywhere. Uh, as we know, they can be, um, simple as an obstruction in a hallway, exit signs not working, mildew, mold, what have you. So it's really important that we understand what those risks are and how to make sure we're keeping track of them, um, uh, correcting them, and making sure we're taking steps to ensure that those risks are managed all the way from initial identification through um, corrective actions and making sure that we have the follow-up documentation to ensure that, uh, that, that we can validate that the work has been completed and that we are following proper procedures when the time comes. So what are the different types of risks? I mean, there are many, many types of risks, uh, listing here just a number. Um, so what constitutes a, a high risk in particular? Um, certainly anything that has any impact to life safety um, or is and non-compliance with regulation. There could be penalties associated with non-compliance. 
There might be systems or assets or equipment that are critical to the overall mission of the organization. Um, even if something doesn't necessarily cause, have the potential to cause harm, it could be a public relations issue um, or quality of the, the care that is um, have an impact on the quality of care that we're delivering. Or it could frankly just be a financial or a cost type risk, meaning that if we're not compliant, there could be associated legal or uh, financial penalties associated with um, those kinds of risks. Some examples are things like managing biohazards or, or hazardous materials in general, fire hazards, um, air or gas, medical gas distribution uh, systems, chemicals, uh, asbestos, lead paint, all sorts of um, types of risks, um, and people, of course, making sure that the people that are working or participating in our um, organizations, our facilities, have the knowledge and the tools and the know-how to make sure that they're doing things and the training to do things in the proper way and are following those procedures as they're supposed to be. So uh, we've worked with uh, many healthcare organizations and in particular with uh, regulation compliance or compliance officers and you know, for sure the kinds of things that these compliance officers need on a day-to-day -day basis are things like understanding the assets, the status of the assets. Have all the inspections been performed? Are assets in good working condition? Are they um, working according to their regulations? Um, we need to make sure that not only are we performing all of the FM or facility services, preventive maintenance, corrective maintenance, are we doing all the things that we're supposed to be doing, but are, are we also tracking that that work has been completed? And are we tracking it in a way that is logical and, and we can quickly pull up that information? Um, in addition to maintenance type activities, we need to make sure that we're inspecting things, whatever those uh, critical assets might be. So we're executing surveys, we're verifying that we are compliant, whether it's through inspections, surveys, um, interviews, all, all types of um, requirement type field analysis that we should be doing and when necessary that we're identifying any deficiencies that we find as part of our regular rounds or surveys. And when we do identify a deficiency, we need to make sure that we're taking the proper corrective action uh, so that we're resolving those issues and we have, again, we have the right documentation that goes along with identifying, assigning, correcting, and closing out, validating that the work was completed and keeping that, that full audit trail with all of those steps along the way. Um, <clears throat> so those are the kind of day-to-day -day operations that a compliance officer may need. In addition to that, during audits, um, the compliance officer or whoever may be escorting the auditors around, they need to be able to produce documentation. Um, again, we talked about making sure we're tracking those activities. We need to quickly recall that data when, we're, when it's called upon during an audit. Uh, we may need to show work orders to prove that we have the proper services, uh, service processes in place. Um, I have been, uh, the tools have been used, our mobile device has been used, and walking around with the regulation officers and or compliance officers and the auditors and pull up floor plans, drill into the floor plans, pull up um, specific deficiencies and show the history of that deficiency, the related work orders, the corrective action, making sure that everything that that um, auditor wanted to see was available. It's an important part of the, the process. As we conduct our surveys and we're performing self-studies of our environments, making sure that we're um, staying on top of all of the programs that we should be um, staying on top of, it's important that we understand our risk levels. Um, and defined by the Joint Commission, uh, showing on the screen here for life safety type issues, um, are the issues a immediate threat to life? And if so, is it high, moderate, or low, or in how, what is the scope of that? So what's the likelihood to harm versus the scope, and they put that into what's called a safer matrix. Archibus has a similar um, concept. We have a compliance level and compliance rank, and we score in, in slightly different methodology, but it's very, very similar to the 
safer matrix methodology for understanding the compliance level and the scope or how broad we are either in compliance or out of compliance. Is it systematic, widespread, or is it you know very limited or you know was very almost nearly full compliance? So we need to not only understand what you know where are the or how many you know elements of performance do we have violations against but also where do they fall within this sort of immediate threat to life or this matrix that tells us um, where to focus our energies. So obviously we wanna focus in the, the red area first and then as we clean up any issues that we might find, we work our way out. So we can establish a planning process based on our self-studies, our self-surveys, or even findings that might come up through an audit process. Nick, before you move on, if you would please either speak up or move a little bit closer to your microphone. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Sure. <clears throat> Feels like I'm speaking loudly. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, <clears throat> so we, when we look at this process, there's a number of different uh, risk management methodologies, but um, a lot of folks think about risk in terms of avoidance, reduction, transfer um, in a framework, if you will, or a methodology. Uh, so there's different ways of mitigating, if you will, risk. And one of those is to do what you can to avoid risk. So a, a risk may be avoided by not accepting or entering into the areas or the, the types of hazards that might be around. So by com conducting compliance surveys, mock audits, um, safety training, we can avoid um, the risks that uh, might be present in our environments. Another, or, or using alternative uh, locations, alternative materials that may have lower risk um, uh, opportunities, I guess. Alternatively, we can reduce um, the opportunity for risk by performing things like preventive maintenance, making sure that we are uh, keeping our systems and assets in, in the best operating condition as possible, um, providing uh, communications when there are things so that we can um, provide the proper information to people that have to interact with environments, understand the nature of the facilities, making sure that we're providing the proper training, the proper um, personal protective equipment to the people that are working within the environments or um, participating in the environments. And finally, transferring risk, whether that's through um, using outsourced vendors that take on some of the risk because they are taking ownership or responsibility for a particular service, um, could even be things like insurance, uh, it's not the best way to transfer risk, but it does mitigate and transfer some of the risk from one organization to another. And again, in Archibus, we have the solutions to help track and manage all of these different methodologies, um, including understanding contracts and the scope of the contracts and who's responsible for what part of um, the contract or the terms of the contract. And as I mentioned, those are in the form of things like in Archibus applications, compliance management, environmental health and safety, hazardous materials, building operations, which includes preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance, um, emergency preparedness. So what do we do when there is a issue? And of course, condition assessment to ensure and help plan to um, develop the capital programs to ensure that we're keeping our assets um, fully functioning and avoiding as, to the extent, avoiding and reducing risk to the extent possible. So, Archibus for Healthcare. And what we mean by Archibus for Healthcare is really it's just Archibus um, and it's using a particular packaging of the standard Archibus applications. So things like compliance and risk management, space management, preventive and corrective maintenance, environment and environmental and health, environmental health and safety, and some of the other activities that we saw earlier, things like waste management or hazardous materials, energy management, all of these relate to um, making sure that we're managing risk, we're um, ensuring that our environments are more compliant or as compliant as can, can be. 
Um, one of the main components of ARCOBUS for healthcare is compliance management. And compliance management uh, is really a platform for defining the types of not only risks, but the regulations that you that an organization, a healthcare organization, must adhere to in order to achieve the desired levels of compliance for the types of organizations that they might have to adhere to. Uh, NFPA, fire regulations, the Joint Commission, CMS, um, whatever they might be, local fire regulations, um, <clears throat> and many, many other types of, of regulations. With the tool, we can inventory, organize, and even automate all of the criteria for those types of programs. So the Joint Commission is broken down into chapters, sections, and elements of performance. You can define in Archibus Compliance Management the same structure inside of the application and define the, um, the events, the actions, the surveys, the type of data to collect in those surveys to satisfy each and every one of those individual requirements according to um, those regulations and programs. And when you're performing the, the audits, collecting the data, of course, you can generate reports to understand your level of compliance with those regulations with those programs and generate those reports for internal management, making sure that you're self-evaluating or even when you're um, getting audited to provide that evidence that you as an organization are taking compliance seriously and you're following all of the right procedures, performing all of the, the uh, surveys and so on to make sure that your organization is as compliant as it can be. Um, when you are using these tools and you're generating events, you are able to assign those events to individual surveyors, maybe using a third party engineering firm to conduct some of the surveys. So you can assign and track that responsibility. As the work is being performed, we need to generate and monitor and, and make sure that we understand and are collecting all the necessary data, performing validations, um, and really getting down to the individual um, issues and conditions and actions that are necessary to identify findings or deficiencies and what are the corrective actions or making sure we have records of conducting the right surveys, inspections, and so on. I'm going to do a sound check. Am I still loud enough? You're good. Yes, thank you. Okay. So uh, it all again starts with the compliance uh, management program. And as you can see in the screenshot here, uh, we start with the compliance, um, we call it the, the managed compliance drill down, which allows us to organize all of the types of requirements, programs that we are as an organization going to subscribe to. And this helps us to plan, prioritize, and catalog all of the things that we need to do to ensure that we as an organization are compliant, that we are executing the right level of maintenance, inspection, surveys, whatever it might be, to the fullest of, um, of our ability. And again, some of the types of um, regulations that we may be um, adhering to are things like what's on the screen here. Um, ADA, Joint Commission, Energy Use, Clean Air Act, Waste Reduction, whatever it might be, whatever is important to your organization, making sure that we're identifying, tracking, and we and making those regulations visible and accessible to the people that need it and using that to drive the processes to ensure compliance. When we have the program and all of the requirements that are needed, uh, we need to then design or create the processes, the procedures, the surveys, define the data that we need to collect or the checklist that we need to perform in order to ensure that, we're, that we are um, meeting those requirements. And for that, we have um, surveys, mobile and desktop surveys. The, the surveys themselves allow us to create what we call questionnaires that 
can collect very specific type of information depending upon the requirement or the asset type or the space type, um, such that if we're inspecting a fire door, we're asking things about clearances and hinges and swings and blockages and not um, something that might be irrelevant to uh, a fire door inspection, for example. Once we have those mock surveys um, defined, we need to actually conduct the, oh, once we have the, the surveys defined, we need to conduct surveys or uh, potentially mock surveys, mock audits, to not only ensure that we are collecting the right information, but then looking at the data after we um, go off and perform the surveys or the audits, gather the responses, look at the data, make sure that what we're measuring and, and monitoring really is going to help us um, identify not only our level of compliance, but also the quality of our program. Are we um, really performing the things that we need to be performing in order to meet those objectives? Um, so that again, helps us to under, understand and avoid the types of risks that, uh, that might cause us trouble in the future. Um, I mentioned that it goes beyond just um, compliance management. There are other um, solutions as part of the overall for healthcare solution for Archibus. And that might be things like, and this, this is just one example of using um, Archibus to help manage compliance, and that is uh, environmental health uh, and safety, which is tracking things like are, the, are our employees receiving the training that they need to make sure that they're doing their job safely, that they're not um, potentially causing or doing something that could cause harm to others, that they understand the training, um, that they have access to and have been assigned the right personal uh, protective equipment to all the equipment that they need, um, that we're tracking whether it's uh, medical information or uh, if there is, God forbid, an incident, that we have the, uh, the tracking of any incidents. So making sure that we have all of the environmental health and safety type criteria covered and documented in a um, organized way. And again, the Archibus solution for that is the Archibus environmental health and safety applications. Uh, in addition to that, um, we get into things like maintenance and making sure that as we are performing our surveys and we find things that are either clearly not being maintained or that we identify a deficiency that needs a corrective action, we want to make sure that we collect all of the data associated with that deficiency, generate the work orders, execute the work orders per, per a normal uh, facilities and operation maintenance program, capture the data, perform the work, capture all of the relevant information, the repair codes, the cause types, whatever it is that we need to capture as part of that process, and bringing that data in uh, into the system from the field as we're completing that work, always associating it with the, um, the right programs, the right um, environment uh, elements of performance whatever it might be associated with such that we have that full documentation and that could even be with standard preventive maintenance programs uh, one of the nice benefits of compliance management is its capabilities to integrate with the archibus preventive maintenance programs and associate or tie preventive maintenance plans to compliance programs such that if maintenance preventive maintenance routines are skipped or missed that would be flagged by the compliance program such that you can identify those and make sure that if you have 10 preventive maintenance routines that were skipped and five of them were connected to compliance items, you may want to focus on those five first um, before going on to the others that are not more nice to have. So again, it helps us to prioritize and plan the work that we need to do as an organization. Um, again, when we, this is just graphically showing what, I, what I've just spoken about, but uh, when we perform our surveys and gather res results from the field, um, we have the ability to generate uh, work orders and follow those work orders through a normal um, CMMS or maintenance program to ensure that we get the work completed 
and again, have all of the, the requirements and paperwork around um, the execution of that work. Uh, related to work and vendors um, are the service contracts. So we talk about um, the, the sort of transfer of risk, or maybe it's just outsourcing for capacity reasons. But in either case, um, <clears throat> as part of a proactive management plan, we want to make sure that when we bring in outside folks to do work, that they are, as part of contracts, that they understand the the criteria for their contract, we want to make sure that as an organization, we're documenting what the levels and lines of responsibility are for those contracts. So we want to um, abstract those, those terms, if you will, into the system and how it relates to either preventive maintenance or um, inspections, whatever it might be, we want to make sure that we are capturing all of that data. Um, and again, um, using that information to um, not only protect ourselves, but for reporting um, and understanding the, the scope of responsibility. It might be different by assets or it might be different by location. So to have all that data available in a single place by contract or by site, whatever is appropriate, um, we, we want to leverage that, that contract management component of the compliance management program. And finally, um, related to uh, understanding your risk compliance is, um, as we talked about before, we looked a little bit at the, the program priority and uh, the matrix of understanding, but there's also different types of um, reporting that you might do. What's your overall risk assessment level? Uh, what's your risk scorecard look like? So again, where do you fall in terms of um, something very similar to the safer matrix. Uh, where are the, the most at-risk facilities? Maybe looking at a map as this is showing, or by location or by different types of um, compliance levels, where are the, 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 the most concentrated levels of deficiencies? Where are overdue or missed events? Um, where, where are the hazardous materials? Where are the, um, the chemical storage locations? All the information and reporting and really understanding as an organization your overall exposure to risk. And there's a number of different ways and a number of different tools throughout the system to help us understand what, that, uh, what those levels are. So again, to, to recap on the application side of things, um, it's all about capturing an inventory and collating and organizing all of the sources of regulatory compliance information. Um, defining and monitoring the actions associated with those programs, uh, making sure that we're reporting and understanding our levels of compliance with those actions, that we're following the proper procedures, um, that we are executing corrective action when necessary, and when we are, we are capturing all of the proper documentation such that we can um, report to the necessary management, regulatory authorities, whoever is really interested in what we're doing in terms of regulatory or compliance uh, management as, a, as an organization or risk management overall. So that's more or less the, the overview of the types of support and applications um, included in the Archibus, um suite of applications that are focused primarily on compliance. What I'd like to do now is just talk through a, uh, a case study. This is a case study that was presented at the annual Archivist Users Conference uh, a couple of years ago. Um, large hospital system uh, based in New York and some of their main challenges were uh, lots of facilities renewal pressures. They're um, a downtown city environment, lots of old buildings, uh, constant renewal of space, um, a lot of research conducted in their space, which requires a lot of support. So a lot of um, the space portfolio constantly being adapted to support their changing needs. Um, there's always pressures around cost, so being able to prioritize and optimize capital investments at, while at the same time redu reducing operating expenses. 
Um, always present is the regulatory pressures. So being able to ensure that the entire organization, as big as it is, is following the regulatory compliance, um, inspection processes and surveys that they need to maintain their level of compliance and understanding where their um, risks are, where their high um, probability of risk is and making sure that with the resources they have, they are managing their exposure to those risks. So these are really challenging um, compliance issues for, uh, for this particular organization. Um, <clears throat> The importance of space and asset management. So when we talk about compliance, we're, we really focused on the regulations, the inspections, the surveys, but one of the, one of the key components of an overall holistic program is the other parts of the environment, the assets, the individual equipment, the medical gas lines, electrical systems, mechanical systems, the buildings, the physical infrastructure, the space itself. Uh, this is one of the quotes that was presented in, the, in this presentation. If X devices were tested last year and X minus one were tested this year, which device was missed? And just to put it in context, um, there were 108,000 fire door inspections and 12,500 exit signs inspections in the year um, that this presentation was given. So it's really, really critical to not only keep accurate uh, compliance data, but also having a very accurate um, inventory of space, inventory of assets, and a CMMS program for performing the maintenance, um, keeping drawings updated and, in and synchronized and integrated with the, with the system, in this case, Archibus. Uh, whether that's coming from bin models or just regular CAD drawings, and then, of course, all of the data coming from inspections. Again, with the goal of making sure that we're providing the right information at the right time to those people that need it uh, to perform their jobs, whether they're people involved in the engineering inspections or uh, the compliance officer walking the floor with the, uh, with the auditors. Really critical to have the right data at the right time. The approach um, to regulatory inspections in particular, while they have all sorts of other things that we talked about, like space and assets to maintain and manage and, and uh, maintenance programs, the group that presented was really in charge of the regulatory inspections component. Um, so their charge is to provide a safe environment for patients, guests, and staff, which means complying with codes, all sorts of codes, not just uh, joint commission and standards. Um, and maintaining the building life safety features, um, maintaining not only the assets, smoke and barrier, fire barriers, um, fire doors, exit signs, fire dampers, all of the components that make up um, life safety, but also maintaining the drawings um, and making sure that they're accurate, they represent the right data. That information is critical in the field when performing the surveys, the mock surveys, the actual audits. Uh, it's critical that if a fire door moved or a, um, a firewall changed its path, that the drawings are updated to reflect that so that when the survey happens or when the audit happens, we have evidence that those firewalls have been inspected properly and any deficiencies identified. Um, <clears throat> the approach is to perform regular proactive self-assessments. Uh, as a large hospital organization, there's almost a constant presence of um, surveyors walking around the hospital performing inspections and collecting data. You saw on the previous slide the kinds of numbers that we were talking about in terms of numbers of inspections of things like fire doors and exit signs. And when they do find deficiencies, making sure that they have a plan for improving or quickly resolving those findings, those deficiencies, and the associated um, plan for improvement or corrective action that they might have to take when there are findings found. Uh, and as, a, as an organization, when we were working with them, they had certain requirements. They had to be handheld and meeting mobile. Um, they had to have, as part of that solution, the handheld solution, the full life safety drawing detail. So again, 
understanding where the firewalls were so when they're out in the field they can walk along those fire or smoke barrier compartments and make sure that uh, they are all meeting the right regulations. Um, all of the building information and other previously found deficiencies are available at the same time so they can look and if they find a deficiency, has it already been reported? Um, if they find a previously identified deficiency and they're out in the field, they can at the same time validate that it was resolved and that they have the evidence to support that it was resolved. So when they are audited and, this, and the auditor asks for the, the history, they have that information at their fingertips. And of course, an integration with the work order system so that when a deficiency is found that requires a work order to resolve that it can be promoted immediately into a work order and corrective action taken and uh, the issue gets resolved, validated, and again, uh, all the way through to close and, and tying back to the original finding. Uh, just a couple of sequences of screenshots of creating a new deficiency. Um, it, it's, as it says, it focuses at the floor level understand what the issue is, place the appropriate uh, marker on the floor, complete the details for the deficiency, and then finally submit. So it's a very simple process performed in the field, and it's graphical, it's easy, and walks the user through a nice process for identifying and um, submitting deficiencies for review by whoever's in charge of looking at the data as it's, um, as it's collected. And some of the benefits of implementing this inspection process uh, as presented are they had a much better in, uh, field practice. So they streamlined their inspection process, saved um, many, many, many hours um, by engineer, by survey, because of the automation that the tool provided. Uh, it, it gave them better, more reliable data because instead of entering information free form or writing something down, it was driven by pick lists and data so that it was easier for the field personnel to identify the right uh, element of performance or the right uh, deficiency type when they're in the field and conducting their surveys. And it started the uh, initial plan for corrective action. Um, it would actually catalog whether, you know, the nature of the issue, um, if there were waivers or things in place, it would identify that for them so they would understand whether or not it was a real risk or if it was uh, okay because of the particular location. Um, and through the tool and the usability of the tool, it actually, um, we had good adoption because um, the tool was very user-friendly, the drawings were interactive, um, and it gave them the ability to interact and work with the drawings very um, easily. And we could get that feedback immediately through the system, through the tool, and could see the issues showing up almost in real time. And of course, overall, it improved the data quality and gave them much better um, reporting and compliance overall as an organization. Um, because they had such good quality data that was connected to real programs with real requirements around things like I mentioned earlier, NFPA, Joint Commission, um, tied to, um, to the drawing data, to the life safety assets and features on those drawings, and everything was connected to the work order system so that they, when deficiencies were connected or created, they were able to escalate those to a work order, get the work orders um, uh, taken care of by deploying personnel and getting the issue resolved out in the field. Uh, and it, this is an ongoing program and uh, seems to be uh, very, very positive. That uh, is about the end of the presentation. Um, I guess at this point, I think I will hand it back over to, uh, to Rob to, to wrap up or check for questions. Rob, you have the ball. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. I just want to give a little uh, brief about Imagine It and our partnership with Archibus. Um, we've been partners in pr implementing Archibus system in some format for almost 25 to 30 years now. Um, also, our, our other line of uh, business is our largest line, and we're an auto desk. Rob, yeah? you're not sharing anything at this time? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I, I had the ball. 
You do have the ball, but you are not sharing anything at this time. Okay. Let me go here. There we go. How's that? Can you see? I can see the back end of your PowerPoint. How's that? There we go. That looks so much better. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, as I was saying, here's the picture. Uh, our, uh, we are also an Archibus Master of Art. Uh, as I said earlier, we're about 25, 30 years experience implementing Archibus. Our technical people have about, on the average, 10 years experience. Our most experienced people, 30 years, almost since Archibus has been around. Um, we are uh, our technical personnel, support personnel, have been nominated and won probably last eight, 11 years, uh, Archibus Best Customer Service Support Award. And generally, we just our philosophy, we want to be your partners in technology, help you with the technology, technological tools that you have and, and the data that you need in those tools to do your job. Um, so next. Oops, sorry. Um, our team, what we can do, uh, data collection, we're a full service company. We can help you with data collection, data transfer from existing systems, uh, have st uh, standards review and creation. Uh, we've been doing this a long time, as I said. Uh, BIM, uh, BIM is, is if, you ha if you're not doing it now, I'm sure you've heard about it. It's, it's coming. It seems like everyone is going in that direction at their own pace. Uh, we, we help with, we have a lot of BIM experts within our, organ within our company. Also, uh, Archibus IWMS and CAFM systems, if the acronym, acronyms or Archibus, as we call it, because that's the only IWMS system we implement currently. Um, <clears throat> implementation integrations uh, of your facilities management information with IT systems, a lot of integrations between systems so that uh, people talk to each other and systems talk to each other, which is really helpful for an organization instead of being siloed. We also offer reality capture in various methodologies, including uh, uh, scanners, uh, LIDAR, uh, and, and transfer that into a, a Revit model into, a, into Archibus if, if, you, if it goes all the way that route. Um, and just basically, as I said before, helping your organization uh, get the most out of your data uh, so that uh, you are efficient, lean, mean as far as the data that you need to manage because, as you know, more data that you have the more data you need to keep up, which is also harder to do. So in a nutshell, that's what our facilities management, our FM group does um, as an organization. If you have any other questions um, that uh, you have or you wanna, would like to have a deeper discussion on what was presented today, uh, please reach out to us here and uh, we'd be happy to have that, those discussions with you. Thank One you. One moment while I end today's recording.